What is up, YouTube? Got another interview here. My boy, Ian Gretsch. He's been a student for a while now, um, but he went through his own journey. And, you know, he was there from the beginning, but uh, he, he wasn't consistent. He was working a nine to five job. And um, it wasn't until recently that he started showing up every day. And then he finally got a wholesale deal. And now we're working together, getting wholesale deals together. But uh, yeah, I just want to introduce y'all. Ian, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's Ian. Um, I'm from the Cincinnati, Ohio area. Um, I'm 21 years old now. Um, I started chasing this, I'd say back and like August is probably like the first course that like I bought. I've been like looking it up on YouTube and stuff for probably like the past year um, or so, just trying to find like side hustles or just different ways to try to make money from home. Like I always knew I wanted, you know, some type of entrepreneurship. I just I knew I didn't want to work a job. Um, and yeah, about like August, I'd say last year, I bought my first course, which was like twenty one hundred dollars and. That didn't really teach me much, but it got my foot in the door, which was important. Um, and I found Isaiah's Discord about his was like the third program that I bought or paid for. And it was also the cheapest. Um, and I mean, after that, I just I was like, I'm sticking with this. And that was probably I was like beginning of December. Right. I think very beginning of December. I started it in December, so. Yeah, it was, it, I, I joined like a few days late after like when you first started letting people in. But like, like you said, I wasn't consistent for a while. Um, so you paid 50 bucks? I will. So I paid you, it was 50, I believe the first time. And then you gave me. Oh, lifetime access for the 150? For the 150. Yeah. 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 Heck yeah. That just goes to show like. Prices go up over time, but uh, the value increases also. So let's talk about the first wholesale deal you got. Um, it was for a thousand dollars, okay. And um, what? How did you just tell us about it? Like the story, and then like how you think you got it. Yeah, so you know, going scrolling on Zillow, doing the doing what you teach us in the Discord, and you know, it's just a random house in uh, it's in Texas. I was looking all over Texas, just a fixer upper. It was in Freer, Texas, which is uh like in the Panhandle of the North North Texas, and I called him up. Um, it had been listed on there for about thirty days, I think, maybe even forty, and uh. You know, I went I went through the script that Isaiah gives us. Um and he ended up accepting my first offer and I was still really uh really uh you know new to it and I was too I was scared to lowball people, you know, much more than I am now. And so I was trying to play it safe. You know, I'm offering like my MAO instead of below that. So he said yes to my first offer. He uh he had it listed at like forty thousand and I offered him twenty seven thousand five hundred. Or no, no, actually no. I offered him uh twenty twenty four thousand actually, now that I think about it originally. And he countered at like thirty, ended up getting it locked up for twenty seven five, not really knowing if it was a deal or not, but I'm just like you know, I'm just winging it, you know, like Isaiah teaches us, you know, at least just trying to go through the motions, get the experience. Um, and so I ended up, you know, I, I started marketing it the way that Isaiah teaches us as well. Um, I, the buyer that I found for it, I had a few different people walk the property um, to my surprise. Cause, I mean, it's just, it was in a, like the middle of nowhere and but I mean, it was getting traction. I had a few yeah. different buyers go look at it. One guy almost fell through the floor. Uh, and so I guess it was, it was a lot worse than I thought. And the buyer that I had that ended up, that I ended up finding to buy it, I found it probably found him like a week and a half after, uh, 
after locking up the contract. And, you know, he went and saw it, um, gave me, or he, he never like gave me a call back or anything. And I couldn't get a hold of him for like a day. And I was like thinking about canceling the contract because none of the other people that went to saw the property were getting back to me. And, um, he never even called me back. It was like my fourth time calling him. He, uh, he called, he answered and, uh, he just started negotiating on the phone. And I tried to act like, you know, I was working with somebody, so I wasn't live negotiating as much. And right. uh, That's so a I was kind of going back and forth. But I also was afraid I wasn't going to be able to get him back on the phone. So I so I just kept putting on putting him on a hold and acting like I was calling my partner or whatever. I, I don't remember exactly. Um but the most I could get him to pay is twenty eight thousand five hundred. So it would have been a one thousand dollar. Uh, assignment fee and I'm like you know what screw it like let me just let's just lock it like let's get it done um I remember I called you because I had no idea what to do from there so I called you and then you uh you walked me through the assignment of contract and uh you actually stayed I think we were on discord or something when <clears throat> when I you know when I was talking to him on the phone because I don't know if you remember but he was he didn't want to sign the assignment of contract um like he didn't want to sign it because he thought that once he signed that he had to like pay me the twenty five hundred. And I was there's trying to explain. There was a language barrier, and so, yeah, you called me up. Um, I think I I heard you talking to him on Discord or whatever. And I was like, all right, call the title company right now or something or like we were on the phone with the title company. We said call him right now. Either way, the title company, the lady at the title company, spoke Spanish like fluently. So we were able yeah. to get three way that way. And then she explained everything to him and he calmed down and then he put up the earnest money, the 2,500 uh, earnest money. And um, yeah. Well, yeah, I had to end up emailing the assignment of contract to them and he signed it in person actually. All right. Um, but yes, yeah, so. So, you know, we're just waiting at that point. We're just waiting on title search to come back or whatever. And uh, it's like, man, it's like a, a week before closing or like the week of closing. And uh, apparently it was like the compressor for the central AC unit of the house and some other things had gotten stolen from the property. And so, first of all, the the buyer had some people to go clean up right around that time. And he didn't let me know, which I mean, like, you know, like that's nice of him to be like, you think he would let me know, especially when it's technically not his, I mean, I guess the property still is his property, but um, it just, it wasn't nobody, he wasn't communicating with me. And then the buyer um, had told me that the stuff got stolen like later than that, than it actually had like a few days after. And, you know, I'm calling the seller, like asking him if, what he, if he knows anything about it. And he's getting kind of defensive. And, um, you know, you, you thought that he, he might have taken it. I didn't know what to think. Honestly, I didn't want to believe it. Um, I didn't want to ruin my relationship with the seller and him cancel. And, you know, I also. I mean, the buyer had already put down his non-refundable earnest money, but it's just, you know, it's just a screwed up situation. It's like. Right. You know, we didn't really know whether or not the seller was on some fishy stuff or what? And at that point, you think the buyer would put some type of lock on the house if he's, if he's buying the house and he already put down earnest money. It's like, I, you know, I, cause, cause you could access, I mean, cause the seller said that, you know, some homeless people or whatever broke in and I don't know, but the house, was, the house was easy to get in. I mean, there was no, you know, you could go in through the garage. Um, right. So, I mean, if I was the buyer, I would have, uh, that's something I would have, you know, addressed as soon as I know that I'm buying it and put down earnest money. But right. So yeah, there, there's the buyers, you know, threatening like he's keep saying that we're waiting until he brings the stuff back um, to close on the property, and I just didn't really know what to do. So it was just kind of like a waiting game. I um, mean, I was just waiting until closing, and then basically the closing date came, and I guess the buyer was cool with it. He's probably he's probably just tired of uh. You know, he just wanted to get it to the finish line at this point, too. But he was still like we still talked about it, um, you know, the day of closing. And, you know, I told him that, you know, like it's 
it's just a situation that we couldn't really do anything about. I think it was the seller. Um, cause like I said, he had people go clean around the time that it happened, but at least the buyer was, you know, cool with it in the end. And we got the, the deal done. Cause like I said, like he put the 2,500 non-refundable down. So technically, you know, I could have walked away with that if the buyer wanted to. It's just, I just didn't feel right about that. So I'm glad that, you know, we got the deal to the finish line. And, right. um, and you know, it's, it's only a thousand dollars, but it's proof, it's, it's proof of concept. Um, and, you know, and, and that's also just, like you said, I just wasn't, you know, I could definitely hold myself to a higher standard and I just wasn't as consistent as I could be. Um, but, you know, it's proof of concept and um, it's only up from there. Right. So let's get into that. Well, first, 5K, I mean, 5X return on investment, five times return on the initial $200 investment. Yeah. I mean, and that's lifetime. So you're going to make more, but it's so much more than that. But uh, monetary wise or like cash wise, immediate return on investment, 5X, but you get so much more than that. But let's talk about what you just said. You hold, you could hold yourself to a higher standard. Um, I know, and I tell everybody, you know, what I focus on in this discord is really having a breakthrough. It's about turning peasants into Kings and Queens. Like, taking you from your nine to five slave mind lifestyle into like becoming your own boss. So like talk about where you were at when you first joined the discord and where you're at now, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, just talk about it all where yeah. you were and then where you're at now. Yeah. So, you know, when I first joined, um, you know, this is something I wanted to do, but it wasn't, you know, I had to really like sit down with myself and like, you know, is this really what I want to do? Um, cause I, I just wasn't, I wasn't committed, you know, like, cause I had, I've had the blueprint in front of me since December and I, and I didn't take advantage. Um, I guess, you know, I was always, so I was working two jobs, um, uh, yeah, like my car had previously broke down. I was working two jobs. Um, and, you know, I was, I just was scared to, to, to quit the jobs. Cause you know, I have rent and my rent is not too expensive, but I still wasn't making much at my jobs. That's why I was working two of them. Um, so, you know, I was just like stuck in that, you know, like I just didn't think I, I could really get out of it or I was too afraid to take that leap. And on top of that, you know, I'm doing what all the, what everybody else was doing on the weekends or I was just constantly going out the house. Um, even when my car broke down, like it was just hard for me to, cause I'd always, I always had people, you know, trying to call me and, and I mean, they're, it's good friends, but I just got to understand that I'm on a, I'm on a different time. Like I'm on, you know, I'm just, I'm chasing something that they're not. And um, like, like even now, and it, it's still something I struggle with now. Like I still, you know, like, like I just had somebody call me before this interview trying to chill and, you know, I hadn't seen him in a while and it's tempting, but I just know that I got to, um, I just got to lock him right now. And, you know, on top of that too, just a lot of vices that I need to, that I'm still, you know, fighting, just smoking weed and just, you know, other things like that. Um, you know, just, and you know, and I'm not like a totally different person now, but um, I'm in the process of changing, and I can. It's it's the fight that's important. Like I'm constantly fighting it. Um, right. And I fighting. could, I could tell you right now, just from me knowing you from when you first joined here. You know, we could all be harder on ourselves, but you did come a long way. Like just from having the accountability of me and other people, I know like other students in the discord, you know, like Twan and Caleb and everybody, like just having that accountability in that community mm -hmm. and having us constantly pump motivation and things into your head, you came a long way. You're, you're actively fighting the old lifestyle. You're taking action on not living your old lifestyle you quit your job. I know that was like really, really hard for you. Yeah. And real quick, the, and what I was going to say is when I did end up actually quitting my job, I had way less money than I had saved before when I, when I was scared to quit my job. So I, yeah, it was just a mindset thing. Right. And uh, yeah, but 
you did come a long way, but it's good um, how you were just talking about yourself. Like, uh, I could hold myself to a higher standard. I'm still doing this. I'm still doing that. You know, I'm not who I want to be yet. I'm not a completely different person. That's good to have that mindset to like, you're kind of like being real with yourself and being hard on yourself in a sense, which is good. But um, also from a optimistic standpoint, you know, from the outside looking in, you have come a long way. But don't, yeah, always have that mindset of like, I'm not where I need to be. I still need, I still have to do. And so, yeah, you definitely, I remember when you started showing up to the Discord and collared shirts, you know, you would stand up, you would start standing up. Um, yeah. And, you know, you're never, I think the biggest thing that helps you to grow is that you're not scared to tell me where you're at. You're not, a, you're not like, a, you're never scared to be real. I th and be real with yourself and be real with me. I feel like that's the biggest thing that helps people is being real. Like you would tell me like, Hey, Isaiah, you know, have you ever struggled with like, uh, you know, weed or drug addiction when you got the money or like, Hey, I'm, I'm still smoking weed, like da da da, or I'm still high. And like, I'm having trouble waking up just being open and honest about that stuff goes a long way. Cause like I said, like a robot could get a wholesale deal. Right. But since we're not robots, you know, we have to deal with what we have, which are our emotions, our vices, our distractions. And I think that you're really doing a good job at fighting it. You're in the middle of the fight. Obviously, you're not you said you're not where you want to be, but you are on your way to get there. Um, How would you I mean, how would you say. um, The discord. And just me as a, a teacher slash mentor slash coach, whatever. How do you think that that's impacting your life? And like, what effect is it having on your life? Not just me, but like the other students, like stuff like that. Man, yeah, and I've said this before, but me, me reaching out to you on Facebook the few days after I had seen that you made the Discord on YouTube and, you know, joining is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Um, it, I mean, and, and what resonated with me, and I feel like a lot of other people say this too, but it's just, you know, I was watching your YouTube uh, channel for a little bit and I originally found your YouTube channel because someone I was doing wholesaling with before had a big wholesale uh, YouTube playlist and one of your videos was in there. And so that's how I came across your YouTube channel. I saw you were a smaller guy. I wasn't no big guru and was a super relatable person. So, you know, I was watching like every single video um, for like a month. And that was like probably like November. So like I said, for about a month until I joined the Discord. And, um, you know, I could just see that, um, you know, I just resonated a lot with you. I've seen that you had been through similar things and at our and you know, just someone I could resonate with. You seemed like a real person, not not a guru, like I said, and just, you know, um, someone that was still kind of, they've done it for a little while, but you're, you were still on like the beginning stage of your journey, I guess. Um, you're not no big shot that to where, you know, you pay or you get in something and, you know, you, you never actually talk to that person and you just get a course. Like we're, we talk to you, you have a chance to talk to you every single morning you know, yeah. for like two hours at least. Um, and more, I mean, you, and you, you help out a lot outside of the meetings too, but just to have that every single day, I mean, that's something that I did not take advantage of at first. Um, and I should have, and, uh, you know, the, it's just the way that you hold everybody. It's not, it's not just about wholesaling. That's the biggest thing. Like it's way more than that. It's like self-improvement and whole as a whole. And, um, you know, just you, you holding everybody accountable to things that you don't have to. And like, you'll ask them, you're like, you want to be held to the standard? Like, if not, just let me know. But, and like, I don't know. I just, I love that. And, uh, you know, you say like, she said, um, like physically too, um, like you definitely made me get back. Cause I was always off and on with working out and, you know, just having that accountability, um, every morning, like we had, for, there was like a little while where, uh, um, that's like the first thing you would ask us when we got in the meeting was, did you do your 50 push ups or did you do your hundred push ups or whatever? Um, just, uh, 
yeah, just the the way that you push us more than just wholesaling, and I mean, it's it, it's it just shows that how much you care, and um, you know, I mean, I, and I've never met you in in person, but I mean, I trust you more than than more than anybody here in uh, in my circle here, um, yeah, just because you know you 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 want to see me win more than anybody else, and um, you're not afraid to be hard on hard on us and I don't know it just you do a lot more than than, than what you need to it, it's really I know it's appreciated by everybody in the discord yeah I appreciate that yeah but yeah no nah, because I, I do care and I just try to be that person that I never had real talk that's really all that's why I find so much purpose you know I was talking to Ozzy the other day I called Ozzy out of, out of the blue um, because he started showing up again, but, uh, before he started showing up, you know, cause I got him to show up, I called him cause he stopped showing up for like two weeks. Right. We, we have that deal closing, got lazy, stopped showing up. I called him, you know, and I'm like holding him accountable. I'm like, you know, da, 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 whatever, getting on him. He's like, yeah, but why me? Why do you care about me? Why just call me out of nowhere? Da, 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 da. I'm like, bro, because you told me xyz about his story his personal situation and you said that you wanted to change that you said that you had an example to set for your family you had something to prove to yourself and i've been there and i want to see you do it bro like yeah if i didn't care it'd just be like give me the money show up it's on you <laughs> and that's what and that's what most people would do in your situation right that's facts a lot of people that just they'll just take the money and uh Hey, if you show up, you show up. If not, and that's totally like that's totally justifiable. Like that's that's totally justified. This is what you pay for. Like sh if you show up, you get it, you get it. If you don't, see it. But I'm like so much more than that because I actually have like like just an interest in seeing other people succeed. Like that's just where I find my purpose and it's something, maybe it's something deep within me and my subconscious and my trauma as like a childhood or something that it's like, I can't let, I can't let people quit on themselves. Like I, I can't bro. Cause when I did it, I didn't have anybody. Like when I started, I had nobody. And I've been through all the phases of the self-improvement to like turn completely 180. You know, first I'm a bum crackhead crackhead in jail get out of jail nobody believes in me nobody wants anything to do with me and then all of a sudden 180 from day one like my mind is 180 but it took a while for reality in my physical body and my physical appearance to catch up with it and you know once people started taking notice of it it's like oh okay oh okay oh and then you get to the point to where you know everybody's proud of you then uh you keep going and people are like, whoa, he's still doing that thing. Like he's still, <laughs> it's not just a phase. And then, and then everybody says, congratulations. Then everybody asks for money. And there's like, I'm sure there's more phases I have to go through, but <sighs> I've been through all that. Oh, and the self-doubt, not the self-doubt, but the, the doubt from your family, you know, family looks at you like you're crazy. That's another phase in the beginning when you really start to, before the results fully kick in, but you're obsessive over your craft. So reality hasn't kicked in, but your mindset is like set on it. And yeah, your family doubts you. They want you to get a normal job. They start calling you crazy. They start, you know, they just doubt you and it really, really hurts, you know, but yeah. So the point is, yeah, I try to be there for y'all every step of the way and let y'all know, like, if nobody else believes in you, I believe in you. Like if y'all don't, cause I know the pain of like being around your family when you're going through this change and nobody understands you. I'm here to be that one person in your corner to say, I, I understand you. I'm here for you. Let's keep going. Cause it's, it's bro. It's hard, bro. It's hard, son. It's so easy to get caught up, especially when you have advices. And like you said, your friends hit you up and all that other stuff. So Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's hard because it's like, I try to think like, oh, I got to be loyal to people or, uh, 
Yeah, and, and I, that's why I struggle with it because I feel like I'm doing something wrong, but it's like, man, like I, I mean, this is my future. This is, you know, all that stuff's going to be there. And then, you know. It is. It ain't going nowhere. It, that's the biggest thing I had to learn to do. There's like a micro and a macro version of that. The micro version of that is when you're procrastinating to do something because you feel like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Oh, I got to respond to this person or I got to take this person to work or I got to go get the groceries. That's a micro level of it, of like that stuff can wait. Nobody's going to die right now. Like <clears throat> it's still going to be there. Let me go do what I have to do first. And on the macro level is... um the parties, the friends, you're scared to cut them off for an entire season of life. But you have to realize like, they're going to be right there where you left them. They are not going anywhere. The parties, the girls, the friends, the family, nobody's dying. Nobody's dying. Okay. I'm going to focus. I'm going to leave them alone and I'm going to focus on me for a season of my life, which could be six months to a year. You know, it only takes one year to really, really change. One year of going ham every single day consecutively will absolutely and utterly change your life around forever. But yeah. yeah. And if there's people that aren't there after that, then it shows that how much time you wasted living in the first place. That's right. It's absolutely right. All right. So what would you say to somebody who's thinking about joining the Discord? Man. I mean, and you know, I, I don't know what the price is now nowadays, but I mean, this is the cheapest. I mean, out of all the, the things that I'd paid for, or, you know, just educations, mentorships, I mean, it's the cheapest one I, I paid for. I've gotten the most value. I mean, you have Isaiah every single morning. You have a group, not just Isaiah, but other people in the same position as you trying to you know get it out the mud and i mean just having that around you being able to have that around you every single day and just because i mean like part of it like you know when when you go through this journey and you're always in the house or you know cutting friends off or you know just not being around people it's like sometimes you, those are the only people you can be around they start to become like your friends and then when all your friends are all trying to wholesale real estate like it just, you know, when you, you, you're the average of the five people you hang around, they say. So it's like when, when the only people I was really talking to, like, you know, I got my roommate that I live with, but other than that, like when I'm in the house, the only people I'm really talking to is people, other people that are trying to do what I'm doing. Um, so it just, and, and that was killing me. That was killing me a lot at the beginning. Um, and even now, um, like, <clears throat> it's like, when you know, okay, I know what I need to do. So I don't necessarily need to join the meetings. It's like the, just the accountability it gives you. Um, when you do join, you realize like, I don't know, it's just anybody that's thinking about joining. I mean, it, I mean, you got to pull the trigger. I mean, it's the you know, now the price is only going up. Um, you know, Isaiah may not always be as available as he is nowadays. Um, I mean, you got to take advantage of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you got to pull the trigger and join. Facts. All right. Um, anything, any last words you want to say before we end this meeting? I don't know. Um, I mean, anybody that's, you know, chasing this, or I mean, chasing anything, um, you know, just keep going, dude. Um, it's, it's, it hasn't been easy, you know, it's been ramen noodles and peanut butter sandwiches every day. Um, but, you know, just keep going. Um, it's all gonna, I mean, that's all, it all pay off. Facts. Hell yeah. All right. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. If you want to become a student or join the mentorship, just DM me on Instagram. If you want to dm ian personally i'm gonna leave his instagram detail instagram or facebook which is the best way uh, facebook i'm not really active on instagram right now all right i'm gonna leave your facebook details in the description below peace peace